So we've talked a lot about a lot of uh, a lot of theory in this class, and we of course want to apply concepts directly to your website. So I'm going to give you a new handout. Um, I don't think I've put it in the network folder yet. Sorry. Let me confirm that. Okay, so I'm going to pass into the network a new document here. If you go back to the network drive, again, you can print this uh, when the printer's on, but this is another document where you don't really need to print because you're going to write on it. Into the network, I just copied a file called Campos SEO1 Long Tail Strategy. I'm going to give you other handouts that are numbered. The company profile one isn't numbered, but sort of think about it as a step zero. This is one of the things you're going to do early on. You need to know about your company before you can market it. So that's what company profile is. It would be a step zero. But now, get a copy from the network folder. Drag a copy of number one, log, uh, long tail strategy. Copy that to your desktop. We'll open it up and we'll talk about it. And again, this is not any sort of homework, but you can uh, do it, and I can check it over. But open that. It should open up. It's it's an ODT file, but it should open up uh, in Open Office or o Microsoft Office. Either way, it should open as a text file. Forming a long tail keyword strategy. What does your brand offer? Nowadays, search engines don't rank your site very well unless you have good content. It's not just about simple keywords anymore. You're not going to be found when people search for Italian restaurants. You'll have a better chance of being found by Itali authentic Italian food in Chula Vista. So it's about the long tail of keywords. If you understand your niche better, you'll be able to potentially rank better. In this activity, you'll define your long tail keywords. Now notice I use a couple of hedge words here and there. Better chance of, potentially rank better. And I say that because no reputable SEO company is going to tell you or guarantee you you're going to rank number one in two weeks. You're going to rank number one in two months. You're going to rank number one in two years. None of them are going to set a hard timetable like that. None of them should if they are a reputable SEO company, SEM company. Because there's so many factors. If they tell you that even before knowing anything about your company, they're probably going to use some of the money that you're paying them to do these paid results. And when you stop paying them, your results go down. Um, and even after they know about your company, and they fill out that other document with you and interview you and all of that and still tell you, yeah, you're going to be number one in three months. Or even, you're going to be on the first page in three months. That's still um, suspect. You shouldn't be getting a hard timetable of results on SEO, unfortunately. It's, it could be complicated. You could be yet another realtor, yet another... Uh, tutor, yet another artist, yet another bakery, yet another web designer. So it's going to be very hard to stand out from the competition. It may happen in a couple of weeks because your competition is terrible and you're going to easily rank higher. It may happen in months because your competition is also doing SEO. It, you may never get to number one, but let's say your website never reaches number one, but your Yelp profile is number three. That's a very good result as well, especially any of your online presences, if they rank well. So, it's going to be a long road, um, but it's worth it. I have two activities that we'll do right now, the old way and the new way. Generic keywords, long tail keywords. We'll do the generic way first. We already touched upon it a bit earlier in the day. Let me tell you in general the idea, then we'll, then we'll do it. Uh, we're going to open a search engine. We're going to then search a keyword, a topic of your company, a basic one, not so specific about uh, location and 
adjectives and such. Just a basic keyword. We're going to see a, a variety of results, of course. Probably our site is not going to rank there. That's okay. I want to see who's ranking and why are they ranking. We're basically doing competitor analysis here. We're checking what's working for the competition. And the, re and the way we will do this is, in this document or in another document, we're going to write notes, or on paper, if you'd like, we're going to write notes about those results, those other competitors that have ranked, we're going to write notes about them. And as a beginner, you might not have the language to understand what you're going to write, and that's okay, you can write what, you, what makes sense to you. Me, as a web designer that's been doing this, doing this now that I think about it, not, not, not a decade, 15 years or so. Um, now that I've been doing this a while, I know these, I know the terminology, I know what to look for, the positive and the negative. You might not, but if you feel like, I don't like the colors, that's a valid thing to write. I don't like that it's so complicated to use, that's a valid thing to write. Also being positive, you're going to have to swallow your pride and say what's good about the competition. They did a really good job putting their phone number prominently. I didn't do that. They did a good job with this gallery, it's very easy to manage, mine is difficult to manage. So you're going to write the good and the bad about the competition. And I have some examples here about what you could be looking for. When was it last updated? Does it have a blog? Is the design modern? Is the site mobile friendly? What do you like about it? What don't you like? And this is obviously subjective. Some subjective things, some objective things. We're going to do that twice, one with generic keywords and one with long tail keywords, more specific keywords. And this, you can do it, this as much as you want, as long as you want. Um, usually when we do this for a client, you know, we're trying to do it for about three to five competitor websites, competitors, just to get a sense of what the industry is like. When we did the one for that restaurant, Texcoco, we there were plenty of Mexican food restaurants to choose from, but we narrowed it down to the ones that were most similar regarding authentic food and such. Obviously, we weren't looking at the results of Taco Bell and that sort of thing. We were looking at the results of Mexican food restaurants that fit more with the values and the personality and the demographic of the client. So what we'll do is, um, let's go to the Start menu. Let's Click Start and search Word. We're going to open Microsoft Word to write some notes. Start typing Word. You should get Microsoft Word 2013. Open that. Word should open up. We'll select the blank document or any design you want, but I'm going to go with the blank document. And at the top left under the file ribbon, I'm going to select Save As. If you've got a flash drive, you should save this. If not, you can just select the desktop. Uh, I always forget to tell people, uh, unfortunately, but these computers have a software called Deep Freeze. In the bottom right corner, there's this little polar bear that's been looking at you the whole time. This polar bear here is deep freeze, which means that our computers are locked, they're frozen. If you save anything on the desktop or the flash drive or the web browser, anything, it'll get erased as soon as you restart. So that's why if you save this on our desktop and expect it to be here next week, it's going to be gone. As soon as you turn these computers off, they go back to the frozen state. So if you didn't bring a flash drive and you want to keep whatever we've done today, you want to email it to yourself. But I'm saving this for the moment on my flash uh, on my desktop, and I'm calling it long tail, whatever you want, long tail competitor analysis. This is a document where we're going to write a little bit of our competitor analysis, where we're going to start to define perhaps some of our keywords and long tail keywords. So you want to save this. You can write it on paper, of course. So I've got a Word document there, and then I'm going to get a web browser. And I ideally would do this for Google and Bing, but I'm going to start with Google. 
Now this would be double the work if we do it for Google and Bing because we could get different results. You might say, well, if Google is 60% market share, why would I bother with Bing? It's only 20%. At one point, Bing was 0%. Now it's 20%. It keeps increasing as time goes on. Google keeps decreasing. I don't believe Bing will eventually be 60% and Google 20. I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe not. But 20% is still a lot of searches, a lot of potential customers. And the reason Bing is increasing is because Google has lost some of their monopoly in some aspects. Um, when the iPhone came out, the built-in search to the iPhone was Google. <coughs> Eventually, <coughs> the contract between Google and Apple expired. And Apple didn't renew it, because eventually Apple thought we don't need Google anymore, which is true. So then they formed a partnership with Yahoo and Bing, and now the default search engine of iPhones is Bing. When you buy a brand new iPhone, it could be Bing. You could change it, of course, to Google, and many people do, because they love Google, but it's all search. So uh, I believe also on the Mac, the default search on Safari was Google, and now that's changing also. I think it might go over to Yahoo. If not, it, it goes to Bing. If you have a Windows computer, if you go out right now and buy a Windows computer, the built-in search is Bing, because Windows is a Microsoft product. Bing is a Microsoft product. You can change it, of course. Oftentimes, I notice that if I visit Google, for example, at the top, it's begging me to change the search engine if I'm on Bing. Uh, and people do, but studies show that um, the data shows that Bing is increasing. As a matter of fact, my friend, she has a Prius. She's got this cool panel on her dashboard with a map and all of that stuff, and search. You go to search, it's got Bing. So that's why it's useful to do this competitor analysis for both Bing and Google. It's double the work. Uh, for the moment, we'll just start with Google. Um, but now, the keyword, uh, we'll start with a simple keyword or two. Uh, what's a keyword that your uh, company is about? I'm going to do, um, do social media marketing. Let's say I want to get a job as a social media marketer. I want to run people's Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. That is a full-time job. Uh, you should be searching for what you care about, but here's an example of my social media marketing. My activity here is you're going to look at the results of your competitors, as many as you want, and you're going to skip the ads. Obviously, they paid for placement. Skip the ads. You're going to look at the you're going to look at the um, organic results, and you're probably going to have to wade in a little bit because. I get the result, entrepreneur.com, an article, another entrepreneur.com article. Entrepreneur, they're a huge entity in business. They've already got the top two spots right here. So I'm going to skip those, but make a note, those are blog posts. What if I wrote an amazing blog post about social media? Hmm. In the news, I get a bunch of stuff about the news. Entrepreneur is there again. Search Engine Land and Van City Buzz. Um, make a note, searchengineland.com. We'll look at it later. But searchengineland.com is a great blog that you should follow to keep up to date on social media and search engines. Searchengineland.com. And they've got an article there from seven hours ago. Timely content. So you're going to skip the articles and the directories like Yelp and such. You're going to look for actual companies. I'm going to skip that Wikipedia. I'm going to skip Mashable, Search Engine Land, Wordstream.com, Social Media Examiner, HBR.org, Forbes. So almost all the results on the first page for me, that very generic keyword, None of them are companies that do uh, social media marketing, blog posts. So 
So you might not get a result right away. That's okay. Go to the next page. I'm going to browse around to, f to see if I can find an actual social media marketing services and consultancy at Brafton. So this seems to be a company about social media marketing. They're on the second page and it looks like they're like the 16th result. The point is then, okay, found a company, not a paid result, not a blog or whatever. And what I'm going to do in my notes is I'm going to copy the title, the address, and the description down here. I'm going to select it from the browser, control C to copy, or right click, copy. And in Word, I'm going to do right click. You can do this, this instead. Right click, paste keep text only. If you just do control V to paste, they will come with the size of the font, and they will come with the color and all that distractions. I just want the text. So in Word, if you right click, and you select the third option, keep text only, that's what I want. I'm going to be collecting as much data as I want about the competition because I'm, then I'm going to be looking at what are they doing to rank. They didn't rank number one, of course, not even on the first page, but they are the highest ranked so far that I've seen of a company with this keyword. Social Media Marketing Services and Consultancy at Drafted. They mentioned the keyword consultancy that I didn't even think of, perhaps, and the name of their company. This one is specifically going to a sub-page about social media marketing Brafton.com. So here's some notes I'm going to make here at the end. Also used keyword consultancy. I'm going to think if that is relevant to me or not. I'm going to make another note here. Did not use keyword well, actually, I'm gonna, I should back up. At the top of my Word document, I should write the keyword that I'm looking for. The keyword for my, in my case was social media marketing. That's what my research is based on at the moment, the keyword social media marketing. And I'm writing here, did not use keyword in URL. Go to URL. the address here. Uh, what I mean is, okay, it is here, but I mean it's not here, Brafton.com. It's not social media marketing Brafton.com. In the old days of SEO, once we figured out the keywords we want, we would need to put that keyword everywhere, even in the address of our site. I would, uh, I would sell my house to get socialmediamarketing.com in the old days. Nowadays, it's not as relevant for you to have your keywords in your address. You can get by like this, brafton.com. I don't know at all what they're about. But then this description, engagement is the cornerstone of social media. Learn how Brafton fuels it with click-worthy social content and real conversations in your important networks. That explains what Brafton does now. I did not use keyword in URL. So it's if you've been trying to get an address <laughs> with your keywords and you've had to get Victor's Web Designs in San Diego.com, you don't need that. VictorWebDesigns.com or Victor.com could work if you couple the other factors we're going to talk about in the class. Because the web has been around 25 years. The internet since the 60s, but the web since about 1989. So websites have been around 25 years or so. And therefore, the name that you really want, Mike'sPizza.com, probably was taken a decade ago. My company, my family might have owned Mike's Pizza for 30 years. But we didn't get the idea to make a website until this year. The name was probably taken either from a legitimate company or one of these many cyber squatters that are out there that just buys domain names to sell them to you when you really want them. 
for $500, for $5,000. When I started off all of this, I thought of a company for myself, VMC Inc. I -N -K, and I had the choice of buying vmcinc.com, you know, vmcinc.net, .biz, whatever. And at that time, you know, in the year 2001 or so, I was still, you know, a student and such, and I didn't have a lot of money, and the dot-coms were, were a very expensive $20 a year. And um, instead of buying that one, I went with the cheaper, vmcinc.net. It was like $12. I saved $8. And so uh, I had vmcinc.net for a long time. I still have it. And um, one day I thought, well, I might as well buy the .com because the .net works, but people are always confusing it with .com. So I went to go buy .com, and it was taken. And it was taken by someone that wanted to sell it to me. And so I checked their site and said, this domain is for sale. Please add an offer. And then in fine print, no offers under $500 will be considered. So just for fun, I wrote, uh, I would like to purchase this for $30. And then I got a reply and I said, sorry, we're only going to go for $500. And then I know that, I know that they were going to sell it that cheap, but just to mess with them, I said, I can buy a domain in my GoDaddy for $12. Why are you selling it for $500? So I was just messing with them, and I know I wasn't going to get it. I'm not going to pay $500 for .com. I've built an online presence at .net. I have a social media there. I use Facebook for it and Twitter and YouTube and all of that. I don't need the .com. I don't need keywords. What's a VMC Inc.? Do they draw? So you don't need a name that is super literal anymore, as long as you follow the other things we'll be talking about in the class such as a very good description. So again, I'm going to talk about what's good, what's bad about the competitor. Good description. But I'm not going to stop there. I am going to click. I am going to give them traffic. I am going to click on the competitor's website so I can further reverse engineer their site. I can further analyze the competition. I'm going to go to their home page. So it's got this uh, parent. I've never seen the site before, but it's apparently it's got the, the modern design. They did an interesting trick right there. They're going to they're going to they're, they're going to shine their light of social media on me. Uh, but it's a modern design, big graphic at the top that catches your attention, slideshow at the top about us, prominent mission and values, what we do our clients, a blog, resources, free stuff. Make a note of that. Free stuff. They have resources up here where they're giving away infographics. They have a marketing glossary, ebooks, video tutorials. That's why they're number one of the non-article directory sites. That's a topic we'll talk about deeper, about giving away free stuff. And then a big prominent contact us, their logo. It seems to be black and white with splashes of color here and there to catch your attention, although I, that's a pretty ugly color. Icons, hand-drawn icons, that's kind of cool. You often see these icons that like everyone has. So you're going to see the same magnifying glass over and over. This seems to be hand-drawn and original. That's nice. It stands out. It shows that they have that extra special touch. That camera's going to tip over on a tripod, but it's a nice graphic. Blogs. Their blog is pretty prominent near the top. Organized under News, Inside Brafton, Video, Blog learn about real results, request a demo, a call to action, that's a CTA, call to action, something that makes someone do something right now, request a demo, get a demo, order a free consultation, buy now, a call to action. I'm sorry, which one is a call to action? Literally this button right here that says request a demo, like do something right now. CTA. A footer that lays down the whole site like a site map, in a sense. A bunch of social media at the bottom 
follow us on all of these networks. Copyright at the bottom. It's it's not something that's been around. Well, they may have been around a while, but I mean that the site is not doesn't doesn't have an old copyright like they haven't updated it. And if we check the blog, this was updated today. 12 days of content. It's their third annual 12 days of content and they're using a hashtag. So they're doing it really well. This is an example of a from this particular brand, uh, I mean keyword, and I'm going to further write down comments. You know, so far I've got a lot of good things to say about the site. Uh, well designed, original content, free content. Just on a personal level, I'm not liking some of these colors that they use as emphasis, like that's a terrible color for me. You might like the color, but I'm not liking those splashes of colors there. That purple's nice. That red is okay, but it kind of scares me. Red on a website and such is going to make you stand out. And I'm kind of seeing here, uh, it's hard to see on my projector, but I saw it on my screen because I have an eye for it. I'm seeing right here, it's hard to see, but the font looks a little weird on that red color, like they didn't fully design some of these edges and transparency quite right. Again, most people won't pick up on that, but if you're really attentive to some of these things, you'll notice, like, why is that graphic weird? Are they going to do that on my site? This photography looks pretty good. That one could be stronger. You don't see too much of the building, actually. Mm, that one's kind of cool, but it's kind of looking at nothing. That one's good. So you're just going to write um, objective and subjective things. You're going to analyze them, what's good, what's bad, what do you like, what don't you like. Because this is your competition. And right now this is a competition that's number one. That's a bad graphic right there that, uh, that has a little bit of the white edge. You can't quite see it on the projector, but on my screen I see a little bit of remnants of white. And this edge is a little choppy compared to some of the smoother edges. Their phrasing and such seems pretty good. You know, they've got a good eye for marketing about writing things that will... Videos your customers will love, results you'll love. Videos your customers will adore, results you'll love. That's how I would change it. Using love twice is, I think, a little redundant for me. I would use a, I would use a synonym. But um, this is what you're going to do. This is a competitor analysis. There's no big secret. You're going to check what the competition is doing. Make notes. You might not have all the language that you need. That's okay. You articulate it however it makes sense to you. Uh, mm -hmm. What do you think of this hand-drawn uh, icons? I mean, do you like, do you like those, but the, uh, those on the top? The they seem to be the there. same style. The same style as these, these hand-drawn graphics. Uh, let me look at a few more. These little these little YouTube play buttons. Those are those are those are their versions of the YouTube play button. Actually, you, you might not have known that were the YouTube play buttons, but you understand that they're play buttons. Um, yeah, they're good. They um, you have to always be careful because overall everything is very clean and then these are hand-drawn. That works on the site overall. You just have to be careful about mixing styles. Uh, one little thing that I would say is, and this is always just depends on how you're creating this, I'm not a fan that this graphic, for example, just ends there, disappears. Same thing here. Same thing here, and same thing here. These are self-contained, 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 self-contained. And these feel a bit incomplete. That's just personal. A lot of people have not noticed that or care. But from a graphic design point of view, I have a degree in graphic design. I look at that and I'm like, mm, maybe if he, they had designed an inner border to cut it off, that way it would feel that it was fully designed 
like that. Each of these has a highlight color. Again, I'm not a fan of that color. That color sort of doesn't feel like it really goes with the whole corporate aspect of it. With the color, and it doesn't look like the color is exactly consistent. That green seems to be a different green than this one. That's the thing I would need. You, you could see it much better on the projector, not so bad on my monitor, but this is the thing about websites. People are going to look at them in so many different ways. On my monitor, this color here and this color looks almost the same. Dark gray, black. On the monitor here, looks on the projector, looks very close. On the screen here, it's different enough. So that's something to make a note of. Readability. Actually, one of the hard things to read online is white text on a dark background, especially black. Great. This part down here, I think, is really, it's, it's off. It's, it's not very good graphic design to have white on black or white on a very dark gray. The opposite, though, is, is much better. Black text on white is great. This is very readable. This good still, black on this light gray, it's readable. White on this green. It's pretty readable. Here we're doing that again. This is a bit too contrasty. White on black. Avoid that. And then that's kind of a bit odd there. Black on red. On the uh, I mean the dark black brown on I mean the black on the white thing. Uh, I mean, it seems like it's by classic. I mean, like, uh, I've seen like, uh, you know, some sites, I think it's kind of like one type of thing, you know, you know, they have a, a, a background, and they have the full quotes. The full quotes and such. You, this is part of the reason also why to do this analysis. If everyone is doing it, then you could get success about doing it a little different. Uh, or if everyone is doing it and you're not doing it, maybe that's why you're not ranking well also. So that's why you're looking at the competition. If all the baking websites have a sort of a style, I could follow along that style to help my site. And if I try to break out of that mold, that could help. Or if I break out too far out of that mold, then that doesn't look like a bakery site anymore, and that could hurt my traffic. I'm going to look at another example. I'm going to back up. So again, as much as you want to write, whatever makes sense to you, you're going to write your notes about a competitor, and you're going to do it for as many as you as you want or you can. So Brafton was one result. Let's see if I find one other one. Well, someone got socialmediamarketing.com, but they're on the third page. In the old days, socialmediamarketing.com would get you number one. Oh, so this site may be hacked. Hmm. So you're going to be a target. If you have those valuable keywords, you might still be a target. Here we go. Crayfish Media. They're on the third page of their second result that is a real result. Parsing it all down. Crayfish Media specializes in social media marketing strategies designed to improve online branding, awareness, and ROI, return on investment. That's another one. I want to copy that result and then make notes about it. I'm not going to go into as much detail as I did a moment ago with the other one, but it's going to be the same sort of idea. paste as plain keep text. So again, I would do... They have the term media, but that could apply to anything like television, radio, whatever. Crayfish, and then their text. So I'm just going to keep writing keywords. Again, I'm not going to do a competitor analysis of all of these guys. I'll do it more for your own on the last day of class. This is a different design. It's much more in your face. For some reason, again, it's not the best indicator, but I'm shrinking my page and it doesn't seem to be mobile friendly, but that's not always the most accurate way to check it. I'm 
I mean, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail to. Maybe they destroy or something because they don't have enough they could but there's still ways to, to get around that because if you have a graphic that's a thousand pixels wide there are techniques in web design in WordPress to shrink that 1000 down to 500 as necessary so there are ways to make sites mobile friendly no matter how you make them Well, I would make notes on that, but I'm going to move on because we're actually getting to the end of the day. I want to mention the second point of this assignment or this activity. We have, I was doing the first one, which is a generic keyword search. I want to do another keyword search, but this time more in depth. Um, I want to do a keyword search where I'm actually searching for a longer term. But notice what I say here, first of all. Any clean search engine search for your long tail keywords. And my note down here explains, a clean search engine is one where you have reset your web browser. I recommend cleaning out all the cookies, browsing history, before using the search engine. This will give you more accurate results. I recommend having a web browser just for these types of searches. If your main browser is Chrome, for example, use Firefox when you need to search. Each browser is different. You'll have to find how you can reset yours. This is important to get results like how your potential visitors or customers would. People come to my class all the time and say, I'm searching, I'm using long tail keywords and such, and I rank really well. But when other people search those same keywords, they don't find me. Well, the problem with that is you're using your own web browser on your own computer doing these searches, and it remembers that. It's not bad, the, search and, uh, the web browsers are designed to make things easier for you. If you keep visiting certain sites, keep searching certain things, the web browser learns and keeps showing you what you want to see. So it's not going to be accurate for you to keep searching with a web browser that has all your cookies and browsing history and such. And there's a few ways to handle this. Many browsers nowadays have some way to enable private browsing or incognito mode or delete my history and such. You'll have to check your favorite web browser how to do it. This is Google Chrome. They have up on the menu bar incognito window that's supposed to not track cookies and browser history and such. Because I want to get the most accurate results though, I go to wherever it is in here about deleting my history, deleting cookies, resetting the web browser, and also doing incognito mode, private browsing, so that it doesn't have any history of what I've already searched for, like my potential customers. Because the, the potential customer hasn't searched for me before, I want to get an accurate search result. So the difference here is that you're going to use a web browser that has been cleaned out, that has been reset, no history or cookies. And I'm saying try it in a different browser than your usual one because probably you have your cookies and such that remembers your email login and your bank login. And if you clean out the browser, you're going to have to type those passwords in again. So if you're always using Safari, download the free Firefox and use that one to do these searches. If you're always using Internet Explorer mainly, then switch over to Opera to do these kinds of searches. That way you don't lose your passwords and all of that on your main browser. And in that clean browser, you'll search. Now, instead of web design, uh, small business web designers in San Diego. And then do the same thing. Check the results of the organic results, not the paid ones. Make notes, write stuff down, opinions, etc more examples to ask. Does it have social media icons? Does it have contact information? Does it have a, does, does it have a feature your site doesn't? And then furthermore, as you look at the competition, perhaps you'll start to see keywords that are standing out or you'll get ideas. And then you're gonna write, you're gonna list 10 simple keywords that define your site and five complete phrases that define your site, your long tail. Once we've developed that on future days, then we'll show, we'll talk about adding them to the site and using them and 
social media and such. By researching your competition, you are seeing what has worked for them. You are defining what sets you apart and what you have to offer in contrast to your competition. You will use your long tail keywords throughout your site in your posts and pages, for example, but you will also create content that fits the overall theme of your site, like on a blog. You will become an authority in the field you've targeted. These results that appear highly have authority, have clout, have content. You will create the content on a regular basis and you will spread this content through the internet, social media, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube, etc. And if you do get the book, there's a section in there you should be quality content on the inside. And I'll talk about excerpts from the book as the days go on, but you should get the book. It's not that expensive. And I don't get any, I'm not affiliated with the author. I don't get any kickbacks, anything like that. But I do recommend the book. And there's plenty of other books out there on that topic. We're going to end the main lecture at this point, actually a little later than I thought. We'll have a little lab time until about 9.30. I'll turn the printer back on if you'd like, but this is what you should be looking at and thinking about for next time. I'll mention um, a couple of classes that I'm also teaching and then we'll wrap it up because they all relate to each other. Um, over on the school's website, sdce.edu, San Diego Continuing Education, you can search, take a class, you can search topics, so if I want to learn about Twitter or social media, whatever, you can search. But if you search my name, or last name, Campos, you'll get a list of the classes that I'm teaching, and you can organize them by date. You can't do that with the printed catalog, and the printed catalog goes out of date. But you're seeing, you can see here that in December, I'm teaching all of these courses. On, Mon on Tuesdays, 6 p.m. I'm teaching social media for your business part one. On Wednesdays I'm teaching advanced Google for business. Some of the stuff there or overlaps with some of the stuff here but then goes a little further. I'm doing this class Thursdays and then Friday tomorrow, Friday morning, it's the first day, 9.30 a.m. to 1, I'm doing social media part two. The weird thing is that at the end of the semester um, it just happened that my classes came like this because usually there's one month where we've got social media part one and next month we've got social media part two. This December we've got part one and part two the same month, the same week. You don't need to take part one to take part two. My, the, my part one and part two are basically that in part one I cover pretty in-depth as, as much as time as we have uh, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Google+. And then in part two, I usually cover LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, and Yelp. So eight networks in two classes. You don't need to take part one to take part two. And you can take part two before part one, or part one and part two at the same time. So if you have the time Friday morning tomorrow, come to part two. If you have time, you can come to part one. You can catch up on on day one that you missed via the videos when you enroll. But uh, those are classes that I'm doing this month. And then next month, apparently, I'm doing the SEO class twice in one week. And then there's advanced Google again, and then social media part one. And then the new semester starts, and then they all, the classes start again. These classes cycle all the time. Look at all the 20 classes I've taught this semester. That's it for the moment. Uh, when we come back, we're going to work on adding the, the Google and Bing Webmaster tools directly to your site. Bring your password next week, and then uh, we'll talk more about that. And then eventually, we'll do a uh, we'll do a we'll do a, a analysis, an analysis of your site on the last day. And then before you know it, the class is over, and it's vacation time. So that's it for the moment. See you next time.